Hey guys, have you ever heard of hydrobromic acid? No, I don't think I have. Sleepy Joe, have you even heard of anything? Hey, come on guys, let's not fight over this. Oh my God, I just need someone to tell me how to make this. Hey, I heard of a channel called Chemdelic that made it recently. Oh, I love that channel. He always posts the most fire stuff. I am going to subscribe right now. He seems like such a good guy. Support me on Patreon so I can keep my lights on. If you decide to recreate anything, it is at your own risk, and I do not accept the responsibility. Uh-oh, Nile Red intro. Anyway, you're going to need sulfuric acid, distilled water, and sodium bromide. Sodium bromide can be bought as a spa supplement, usually to boost the bromine in the water, and it's pretty readily available online. I'm first going to get a 1 liter beaker, and I'm going to put a stir bar into it, and I'm going to fill it up to about 400 milliliters of water. I will be using Nerd Rage's hydrobromic acid tutorial, so that's what I'm going to be using today. 250 grams of sodium bromide is going to be put in. Now, I actually used about 252, which I will calculate the percent yields and adjustment of that. However, 250 grams is perfectly reasonable. Now, we do want to put a thermometer in here, and it's going to be actually really important that we have this. We don't want the solution when we add the sulfuric acid to get above 70 degrees Celsius, as this is going to release some of the bromine out of it, and we really don't want that. We're now going to measure out 98% concentrated sulfuric acid, and we're going to get about 200 milliliters. My sulfuric acid does have a weird color to it. That is perfectly fine. Sulfuric acid does that once it's left in its container for a while. So if you do see that when you do have sulfuric acid, don't worry too much about it. I put the container into an ice bath just because this will heat up a lot when you do the addition of sulfuric acid. The addition of sulfuric acid should be done slowly, and we really don't want the temperature going over 75 degrees Celsius. The reason for this is if it gets too warm, the bromide will actually reduce the acid, and bromine will come out. Honestly, in most of the videos that I watched about this, none of theirs changed color, but mine did. Now, theirs might have slightly changed to a very light orange color. However, mine just kept getting darker, and it was kind of worrying me. And the messed up part was that I was actually drinking crushed soda earlier, and this looked exactly like it. Mine also fumed quite profusely, but it really wasn't that big of a deal, as I was in a very well-ventilated area, and it'd probably be a good idea to do this outside. Once the addition was done, you should let it cool, and the sodium sulfates and sodium bisulfates will precipitate out. I let mine cool for a while, however, not really much crystallized, so I just decided to put it into the 1 liter round bottom boiling flask and set up the distillation. Here you can see the sodium bisulfate and sulfate crystallize into the beaker, and it actually looks pretty cool. The funny thing is, is the second I put it into the round bottom boiling flask, it actually all decided to crystallize out. I just decided to distill anyway, and it really didn't make that much of a difference. As the solution started to heat up, you can see that it's slowly starting to get into a darker color. Now, eventually, as the distillation progressed, it got pretty dark. It actually reminded me of Coca-Cola, and apparently there was a lot of soda chemistry going on in this video. As things started to heat up more, it actually started to froth more. This kind of did make me a little nervous, but the frothing really didn't go into the tube, and we were just fine. Essentially, what we're going to do is collect all of the distillate all the way up to 124 degrees Celsius, though mine really didn't just start coming over until about 124 degrees Celsius, which usually happens in a lot of my videos. I promise I'm not faking them. Here, you can see it's at 124. Now, here's also the start of the distillation, and you can see that the liquid coming over is quite clear. Now, it always doesn't look like this, and sometimes it can appear as a yellow to a darker orange solution. This is just because there is some elemental bromine dissolved in there, and you have to take it out using a future step. As a precaution, I made a sodium thiosulfate trap, just in case any bromine vapors decided to come out. When no more distillate was coming over, I turned off the distillation, and I let everything cool down. When it was all said and done, we had a very light orange solution. This is our hydrobromic acid, and it's very slightly tainted with some elemental bromine. I decided to do a density test, as this can kind of tell us where we're at. It ended up being about 1.32 grams per milliliter, and that really isn't close to the 1.49 grams a milliliter that we need for azeotropic 47% concentration of hydrobromic acid. I actually decided to put everything into a container as it was late at night, and I actually kind of wanted to get some sleep. The next step is to do a fractional distillation so we can get some of the water out of it. After the first distillation, we had just a hair over 400 milliliters, and we're going to probably reduce that by a pretty fair amount. I also want to show you the round bottom boiling flask that the original solution was in and all the crystallite that actually decided to precipitate out. This was also not fun to clean. The next day I set it for a fractional distillation and again we're going to fractionally distill 
and we're only going to collect at 124 degrees Celsius. I actually neutralized and discarded anything that came before that. Overall, the setup is fairly simple. And one important thing is you're really going to want ice cold water for the condenser as this will get warm. Now, I do have kind of a, an unsafe way of doing this, but, you know, you kind of have to do that a little bit in chemistry. I just wanted a quick and easy way to put on a receiving flask, and this is what I thought of. Everything that you see dripping into this receiving flask was actually neutralized and discarded. This is something that I don't want as it's not at the 124 degrees Celsius. It did take quite some time for everything to boil down and eventually hit the 124 degrees Celsius mark. You can see in this next clip that it remained at about 106 to 110 degrees Celsius for quite some time before it actually hit the 124 degrees Celsius mark. When the temperature finally reached 124 degrees Celsius, I made sure to be very careful and I switched out the flask for the new receiving flask. Now, everything that we collect should be pretty close to the azeotropic hydrobromic acid, and we're definitely going to keep this portion. Now, I did not set up a sodium thiosulfate trap for this run, however, I should have. As the solution started to boil down, the elemental bromine that was dissolved in there did start to accumulate and be more concentrated, so that was kind of a worry. As more of it boiled over, you can see that it took on more of a slightly orangish, yellowish color, but it eventually turned fairly orange as time went on. Here you can see it's just about 124 degrees Celsius. Yes, there is a small air bubble in there. Yes, it is annoying. Here is where I stopped the distillation. Now I could have kept going, but I just wanted to be safe and really not have to deal with any of those bromine vapors. After everything was done, you can see that we have this nice, slightly yellow hydrobromic acid. If it did decide to come over a slightly more yellow or orange, then you could use elemental sulfur to get most of it out. Though Nerd Rage does have a video on it, and I would recommend to go watch that. In the end, we got about 277 milliliters of hydrobromic acid. This actually works perfectly, and this is exactly the amount that I need to make the bromoethane for the next video. Now, unfortunately, these scales that I had can't hold a bunch of weight, so I had to take a slightly inaccurate measurement of the density. The measurement that my scale gave me was about 1.42 grams per milliliter. However, I do think it is closer to the azeotropic one, just because my scale and the way that I had to do it is not really the most accurate. Or who knows, maybe I'm way off, but I just got the worst yielding hydrobromic acid I've ever gotten. I could fractionally distill again, but this is, again, sufficient enough for the bromoethane that we're going to make, and it should work out just fine. Please subscribe as it keeps me going and it keeps me motivated, and I thank every single one of you for doing that.